Greetings. This is Annalie QB coming. I'm coming to share my 11-11 um, experience, how 11-11 came to me, found me, stalked me, and chased me all around. And then I, in return, stalked it and chased it all around until we became one, 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 again and again and again till infinity. My 1111 phenomenon story. Um, first of all, let me just say my birthday is 211, which is 1111. And I have a son by the name of Amazing. And his birthday is November 11, born, he was born in the 11th hour, 15 minutes before midnight. Um, he turned, amazing turned, two years old in the year 2011. I swear I'm going to try and tell this as quick as possible because I don't want this video to end up being 30, 40 minutes. Um, it's years of, you know, years of information. So I'm going to try and cram it within 15 minutes. Okay. All right. So bear with me because I'm going to be speaking rapidly. Um, okay. So my first trip to West Africa to meet my twin flame love, I sat on a flight which was 11 hours, and I sat in seat B-22. Now, it is my first time, you know, that was my first time going there, and think that's a coincidence? Nah, uh, -uh. <laughs> um, And this was maybe 25 years after my relationship with this 11-11 had started, you know, when I got to meet my twin flame. Okay. So, um, when 11, 11 first came to me or found me, I was on a job. I was 19 years old working a midnight job. I got to work one night, the television was on and all while I'm working, I'm listening to this lady, Solara, speak about this 1111 phenomenon. And I didn't understand the language. I mean, they spoke English, you know, but the words um, that was being spoken, it was too big for me. Like it was words that I never heard before. I don't know what they mean. I never heard of this 1111, but all while I'm working, it, my all my um, senses was being triggered and pulled on and heightened and I was really tuned in you know listening and I remember specifically too I worked so well that night it's like I, I was being charged up just listening to this information shortly after that like immediately immediately after that I was seeing 11 11 everywhere everywhere I turn I was seeing 11 11 11 11 Till eventually I started um, looking for it. You know, I was seeing it and then eventually I started looking for it. And one way I found it was when I found a book. I went to the bookstore and told the book um, keeper the, at the cashier, the cash register, the cashier at the cash register that I'm looking for a book, anything on 1111. And voila, there it was, Solara's first book that she ever written. Um, I purchased it and of course, took it home, took it with me, took it to my job. Now, by this time, I had a different job. I was working at a, um, a nightclub and I was like the coat girl. And I would get most customer come in, they give me $2 tip. And so every time I would get $2, I look at it like 11, 
and two more dollars will come and it's 11 and it's 11 and 11 11 11 and then i will go home and i'm putting away all these dollar bills and all i was seeing was one 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 and for me it was 11 of course naturally 11 is um my my number like i could say one of my i vibrate on that number of course um it's my the day i was born on and it's even doubled and um Mm. what was it that something it just slipped my mind okay so back to the uh working at the club as the coat girl and getting all these dollar bills and seeing 11 11 and then i moved from that job now i was 19 19 years old i just jumped from job to job you know um after the coat job there i did that for like three months then i went to be in the lottery girl at a, a store somewhere this was in um i must say detroit michigan but it was like on the outskirts of detroit you know i was the lottery girl and so of course um 11 11 11 would be coming at me 2 11 20 11 and one day something said to me play the number 20 11 because why Here's the reason. From I was about nine years old. No, I was nine years old. I was playing in the schoolyard at nine years old in Jamaica. All the school kids are outside on lunch break and everybody's playing all around. And I was running around and I remember I stopped. And I felt so lonely. I felt like something was missing. I was missing my one true love and I stop as a nine-year-old girl and I was just taking in my environment and I said 2011 or some some a uh, long long years to come I'm going to find him like I don't know um it, it was like oh my god I'm about to cry because I am like seven years older than my twin. And so that means when I was nine, he was two, you know. And so anyhow, um, that day I remember I just stopped and I was happy like, oh, my God, he, it's here or whatever it is that something that is missing from me. I will have a chance at getting it back. And I remember be, from around nine years old, I was looking for this year 2011. And all through my um, teenage years, I can't wait for 2011 to come because in the year 2011, something phenomenon is going to happen, something wonderful something great is going to happen for me or to me and so i also remember um being afraid that i will die before 2011 because even when i was like 14 and 15 and 16 2011 seemed so far far away and i'm like oh my god i hope i live to see 2011 i hope i live to see that day or that time when this amazing whatever it is that's going to happen i don't know but i hope i live to see it because it's supposed to be in this year 2011 and i lived my life some days i totally forgot about it and some days it would just be on my mind growing up through my um teenage years and my young adult years okay so um now i'm 19 and I'm the lottery girl, and something say, play that number, 2011. It's also my birthday. It's a, just a zero in the middle, but you take the zero out, the zero is nothing. It comes down to 211, which is 1111. But anyhow, play 201111. And so I'm not into playing the lottery and playing numbers. I just don't like it. I, I hesitated for a long time, but it just kept on 
flashing me. It kept flashing me till eventually I give in and I started to play it. And I will play it in the midday. I will play it, um, what is it, like two or three times a day. And it would never hit. And the very day, I must have played it for about two weeks straight, y'all. I spent some good money playing it for about two weeks straight. And if when I finally said, oh, it'll never drop, it'll get over it, I stopped playing that very day. I would never forget it because I cried. It dropped straight to zero eleven, straight to zero eleven, And I was like, oh, you son of a gun. So what, you think I'm going to play it now? Well, it just dropped. It's not going to drop again. And guess what? That son of a gun kept dropping. Every time I turn around, it was either, it was like either 1102 or 0211, but it just kept dropping for a while, like just making fun of me. And I was like, oh, snaps, yo, I have to play it. I'm going to play it box, play it where it can fall either which way. It never fell again. So then eventually I was like, yo, this shit is creepy. This is so evil. This is wicked, yo. Forget this. I was just like, forget it. Oh my God, come back. Yes, come back. Let's roll on. What you saying? I should change it now? Okay, let's go. Go here. Wow, 11, 11, 11. <laughs> So, um, I started to back up off of it because I was just like, uh-uh, I don't like this. And right after that, I left work one day and I'm driving down the street and I saw this, uh, building with 1111 on it. And I went to knock the door. I just like stopped the car, parked, got over there like what the hell 11 11 is just on top of this building like of course i want to ask somebody what is this 11 11 all about i was only 19 years old and like the little bit of information I, it was just so taunting and haunting and it was like oh there's a building with 11 11 on it i have to like see whoever is inside i want to ask them why is it 11 11 on this building it's not even the address of the building so why is it up there and it's not saying the time did it have oh yes it did it did have the two dots in between there so anyhow nobody answered i kept passing by and i would stop and i would stop and no no one one day i left a note with my name and phone number and saying um the reason why and nobody called me one day i'm passing by there and i saw the door open it was like cracked open right so i went and <laughs> It was kind of scary, but, you know, I got up there and there's a man sitting surrounded by books, books everywhere, books everywhere, books piled up on the floor from the floor going ceiling high, books, books, books. And all he had was just a chair where he could just sit, you know, he didn't have much space to even walk around and he looked like Santa Claus, you know, but he wasn't um, gray, gray here, gray bearded, you know, but it was long beard and um, he looked strange, weird to me. So I said, I greeted him and it was eerie. And he had a pleasant smile on his face, though, all while I was talking. And I told him how I left the note. And he had the note right there by him. He picked up the note and he showed me. Like, yeah, you know, he got the note. And he said, well, if I wanted to learn more, that I should come back another day when I have time and we could sit down and talk. And he told me that he was an astrologer. And I said, okay. After that day, I started seeing this man everywhere, everywhere I turn. I'm driving to work. I'm coming home from work. I'm going to the grocery store. I would see him driving in this little red car full of books, full of books. And he looked so weird and like he would pull up next to me at the red light and like look and wave at me. And I'm like, oh, creepy. But. 
the good thing he never showed up at my house or anything so let me click out of here y'all so i was just like okay you know not a big deal but it's a little creepy all right now so after that episode pass well no i'm forgetting why i didn't even get with that man i was in a um christian young people group called the agape tribe and when i told them about this 11 11 and that i met this man and i explained everything they said don't even go there it's evil it has um bad energy and don't mess with it it's not of god and they scared the shit out of me on top of the man and then the lottery thing that had happened to me it was like oh yeah let me just leave it alone and so yeah i left it alone for for quite some years but i would still see 11 11 i would still see it and i would ignore it i ignored it well after all of that to make a long story short, I end up with a son many, many years later. I end up having my son being born. And that's when I, that's when I really said, no, no, this is something. You know, when my son was born like that, and I know I didn't plan it. I didn't plan the pregnancy. I didn't plan the day I would give birth. I didn't plan none of that. And it just happened. And that's when I started to say, no, this is a calling. This is some deep, deep spiritual. This is something that is beyond my understanding. And I have to give in and, and just be it. It's already my numbers. It's my phone number. It's my, um, my doctor. Uh, my doctor, her name is Anna, like mine. She's in building 1111 and her room number is two, number two. So it's like after all of that, it's like, oh, no, oh, wait. <sighs> Breathe. Okay. And I gave in. Then the year 2011 came. Ah, I live to see 2011. And my son turned two years old in 2011. And in that year, 2011, I met this man. Oh. Mm. Well, I never realized it when I first met him, even when we started our um, love relationship until like months later, I started to see like, hold on, this is something extraordinary going on here. Oh, snaps. It's the year 2011. I even forgot I was living for this time. I was living to see this year. And I met you in 20... It's you. Oh, my God, it's you. I was supposed to meet you. <laughs> it's you, it's you. And I knew it, and I knew it, and I knew it. And so, yes, I made it there to meet this man friend of mine um and on his body y'all it's like this on his body his arm mm -hmm. grateful he's got on his body but it's more like it's more like on his shoulder right there on his shoulder one day i realized there's a tribal mark where they take like a razor or a knife and they slice you they cut your skin i think he said even they put medicine in there yeah it was like yeah they will cut you and put some and it's four times so it look like is one 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 on his body <sighs> this man of mine so with all of that um there is oh so much more but of course i couldn't tell it all even with this uh lady uh nita that i used to take care of her son would call her 
11 a.m. every day and 11 p.m. every day, right on the dot. You hear the phone ring, you look, you will see it's 11 a.m. or 11 p.m. And I wonder how he does that. How does he do that? Then one day I was sent to the family's business. I had to go to their restaurant. And I was told, um, I didn't use a GPS. I was just told where to go. And when I couldn't find a place, I had to ask for help and directions. And when somebody said to me, turn, make a left on 11th Maple Street. I'm like, whoa, 11th Maple Street? Street. So this man called his mother every day on the 11th hour, morning and night, and now their restaurant is on 11th Maple Street. Okay. So I get to 11th Maple Street, I find the restaurant, and lo and behold, the address of the restaurant was 1110. <laughs> yeah, and uh, all of that. Um, once again, to even say my phone number is like 211. Um, I met a man once and the man said he was reading me. He was a spiritual, spiritual man. And um, he saw my phone number and he said, that's your phone number. That's your birthday. These are the numbers that you're vibrating on. He like, yo, I have to have you. Can I, I need you to be mine. I wasn't available. I wasn't available for him. Um, I had met my twin, you know. He's searching, looking for his twin. But because of his knowledge, you know, esoteric knowledge, his, his knowledge of numbers and everything, he knew what I did not know. And... Um, when I said to him that I couldn't be his, the man was sitting on the couch and the things on the wall just started falling off. Um, in the kitchen, things started banging all around, banging all around and shit was just like bang, 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 bang. Because he was sitting there getting so upset and whatever he was going through because... He wanted to have me, he needed somebody like me so bad in his world, but I was not available for him. And so that made him frustrated and, and I didn't even get scared because I, I was quite contented sitting there in front of him in his space. I was inside of his place, inside of his world, and I was sitting there just watching Bang, 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 this shit fell off the wall. That over there fell off the wall. Noise start making in the kitchen. And I'm just looking right at him. And I was comfortable and confident because I had already met my twin. And you see, when this whole, uh, the it, I said the 1111 chased me and then I chased it back. And then we basically like collided until we became one. I was one with it. So there was nothing to fear. This is my 1111 journey story. And it continues to infinity. It doesn't end. Once again, I came, I touched. Now I'm peace out. Till next time.